Hi folks and welcome to Attica Armory. I received a question from a new shooter a while back asking if long-term daily exposure to tritium is safe. I thought that was a fair question considering that tritium is a radioactive isotope. So today we'll be doing some experiments with tritium night sights, a tritium compass, and a radiation detector slash Geiger counter to find out just how much radiation is being emitted from these glorious glowing globules of tactical emanation. Before we start, please remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to pick up a bottle of our Attica Armory Citrus Powered Synthetic CLP at AttagaArmory.com. It's an operator grade cocktail of liquid joy made for all of the arms you like to keep and bear. Now, let's get to it. So what exactly is tritium anyway? Tritium is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen, and it glows as a result of an internal process called radioactive decay, which is why you don't have to recharge night sights for the life of the product. Radioactive decay is the process of a radioactive isotope shedding nuclear materials until it breaks down into a stable state. In the case of tritium, it sheds beta radiation, otherwise known as beta particles which consists of electrons or positrons being ejected at extremely high speeds. The beauty of tritium is that it's a pure beta emitter, so it doesn't also shower you with dangerous ionizing radiation such as gamma and x-rays. It will simply shed beta particles at a steady pace until it decays into a stable state of helium-3 throughout its relatively short half-life of only 12.3 years. Tritium is used in a number of different applications, from night sights to watches to compasses to airplane exit signs and even in the production of nuclear weapon components. Now, as you might imagine, high levels of beta radiation can be extremely dangerous, as these tiny atomic cannonballs can be moving at ludicrous speed. When absorbed by human organisms, beta particles can run amok on your delicate cell structures and DNA components, which can lead to permanent cell damage, mutations, and cancer. So at this point, the questions you might have could include things like, should I be concerned with packing around a source of beta radiation on my waist all day long for years on end? That's fair enough. Or maybe, are my gonads going to erupt into grapefruits at some undetermined point in the future? Again, a profound inquiry. Or better yet, are my children going to be born with webbed feet, a tail, and some weird superpowers that make them a crime-fighting yet awkward social outcast who wear spandex jumpsuits with their underwear on the outside? Well, one can only hope. So, let's find out. For today's test, we'll be using a GQ Electronics model GMC500 Plus radiation detector. Now, this is not some old-school Geiger counter from the Cold War that you might find in a cosplay store next to the steampunk aisle. GQ Electronics produces high-quality, newly manufactured, affordable radiation detectors, and the GMC 500 Plus is no exception. So this is the device that we chose for our comparison. Please note that we currently have no affiliation with the manufacturer or any distributors of this product, and no one paid us to place this in our videos, so this is just our honest take on things. The GMC 500 Plus is a dual tube detector, and it has a very wide detection range that reads beta, gamma, and x-ray emissions. It can detect radiation doses ranging from 0 to 42,500 microsieverts per hour, or 0 to 982,980 counts per minute, or CPM. Since you can't see, smell, taste, hear, or even feel radiation until after it has already done massive, irreparable damage to your cells, this is a great tool to add to your it hits the fan inventory. If you want to learn more about the GMC 500 Plus, we'll leave you a link to our blog post with full details in the description below. First, let's move all of our tritium sources far away from the radiation detector and take a basic reading of the normal background radiation in our shop. Here we can see that our average background radiation in the shop is around 0 0.17, 0 0.18 microsieverts per hour. It'll also spike up to maybe uh, 0 
20, 0 0.21 as you can see here. Um, so we'll just say maybe around 0 0.19 as our, our standard average. This is well within the officially determined safe range, as you can see on our little card here. Uh, the standard normal background radiation can go up to 0.33 microsieverts per hour, so we're well within that. Now bear in mind that a microsievert is one millionth of a sievert. By comparison, the radiation levels at the Fukushima disaster site range from 73 up to over 500 sieverts per hour. Not micro sieverts, yes, sieverts. So Fukushima's hot zone is cranking out many millions of times more than the normal background radiation levels. So I guess Fukushima is the new F word, folks. Now, Let's test two fresh tritium sources to see if we can get an increased reading that is measurable. Both the tritium night sites and the Kamanga mil-spec tritium compass are less than a year old. So the tritium is fresh, bright, and presumably cranking out as much radiation as it's physically capable of producing. And we can see that our radiation levels for the tritium night sites are around 0 0.17, 0 0.18 microsieverts per hour. So that's really right exactly where it was at with just the regular background radiation. Let's see if it's the other tube maybe. If we put our other tube a little bit closer to it. That brings us still in about the same range. Let's try the front sight area. That kicks us uh, really same deal. 0 0.17, 0 0.18, 0 0.19 micro sieverts per hour. That kicked us up to 0 0.21, 0 0.22, 0 0.23. It does look like there's a tiny bit of measurable increase there. We're up to a 0 0.23, but now it's dropping back down to 0 0.21, 0 0.22. So we can see that we're still way below the safe levels of just normal background radiation. And just as a quick checkpoint, you can see that our normal background radiation has actually increased a little bit, and it'll do this throughout the day. It kind of just depends on the situation in the environment that you're in. It's never really at the exact same constant level. So our normal background radiation is now bumped up to maybe a 0 0.26, give or take. Just uh, note that we are looking at increased normal background radiation right now. Let's take a quick reading of our compass. Basically, this has various tritium inserts on on the dial and uh, on the background of the actual base uh, slash frame in there. You can see actually we're getting a substantially lower reading right now than we were getting just a minute ago with regular background radiation. So we're now at a 0 0.18 micro sieverts per hour, 0 0.16. Let's move this to the other tube to see if that makes any difference. I always forget which tube reads which uh, type of radiation, but we'll try them both. So we're still at 0 0.18, 0 0.19, we're basically still in our normal average background radiation range here. Now it actually dropped all the way to uh, 0 0.14, 0 0.15. This means that our tritium sources are producing a virtually negligible increase in absorbable radiation. This is because tritium produced beta radiation is really not energetic enough to create a measurable result. It's actually barely able to transmit through a very tiny portion of our atmosphere. And any remaining beta particles are basically stopped by the outer most dead layer of your skin. This is why tritium is such a great light source for battery-free, close human contact use. So there you have it, folks. Tritium night sites appear to be just as safe as normal background radiation that your body absorbs every single second of your entire life. Heck, even a banana will expose you to about a tenth of a micro sievert due to its own naturally occurring radioactive isotope of potassium called K40. But in Unless you can ingest several million bananas all at once, you don't have to worry about it. And with that, I hope this helps ease any concerns on this topic. Thanks for visiting today, and we'll see you again next time at Attica Armory.